Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here, welcome back to the channel, in today's video we strip the Magicka Sorcerer down butt naked, we're not using Harden Ward, we're not using Dampen, we're not using Pets, and I'm going to show you in this video you guys can absolutely dominate in Cyrodiil and BGs without having to run any of these abilities. Let's get into it. Welcome back everyone. Apologies for the lackluster PvP clips at the beginning. I had no intentions on putting this build out, but in a lot of my background footage I had this build, well an unrefined portion of this build kind of playing in the background just trying to have some fun at the end of the patch and I got a lot of questions asking me exactly what I'm running so I'm going to reluctantly tell you guys what I am running. Let me preface this by saying this is an extremely high skill cap build. It is not for the faint of heart. If you are new to the Magic of Sorcerer, this is not the build for you. Or in solo play. Solo play is very, very difficult as well, but it can be done. Next time I will record all of my gameplay instead of just bits and pieces here and there. Because I do have a lot of clips. Unfortunately, I did not record because I didn't plan on making this build. But it's been really fun, so... Let's get into it guys. A huge shout out to the patrons. Thank you so much for your contributions to the channel. I honestly could not be doing it without each and every single one of you. Keep me motivated. Thank you so much for that. Guys, I'm doing a PvP top 5. Please, for the love of God, send me your PvP clips. There's a card in the top right hand corner of your screen and also down in the description somewhere. Last thing, Patreon people. Patreon perks. I do anything you want in Discord. Well, not anything. I'm obviously not going to... Okay, we're not going to go there. But PvP coaching, any PvP questions you have, sparring, theory crafting, anything you need. If you're a Patreon supporter, I will get to you in the Discord as soon as possible. If you need dueling or coaching, whatever have you. There's a special channel here in the Discord, and it only costs like literally a dollar. A dollar a month, that's it. And you can access to me, you can access to pretty much everyone in the community. I mean, let's be real, I'm, I'm not trying to sell my Patreon, I'm just saying that if you honestly want to get better at PvP, I do not mind helping whatsoever. Okay, so let's get into the actual build. We're running a high up on this, it's probably not optimal, but since I, this is just a build I'm playing around with, uh, this is very super off meta build, mind you. So. Character sheets, uh, everything uh, completely unbuffed, and if we uh, semi-buff everything, you know, this is also, you know, w without continuous attack or whatever. So, we're up to like 4,600 spell damage. Now, if you want to put on Burning Spell Weave, uh, you absolutely could. I think we actually go higher than that, actually. Yeah, we're up to 5k spell damage, excuse me. Now, with continuous attack, if you wanted to go crazy with this and put on Burning Spell Weave, you can definitely hit 6k spell damage, which is pretty crazy on the Sorcerer. 
We're not worrying about max and magic of pool, so get that out of your heads. We're just worrying about our spell damage because that's going to help with our heals. Spell penetration is pretty high as well. We have 8400, not the best, but it's not the worst either. Crit resist is 2k. Back bar resistances are looking at such for your reference. And then we have the Astro Mundus with Bewitch Sugar Skulls. You may already notice one of the sets is Engine Guardian. So the very first set we're running, very basic spinners. Again, you can run Burning Spell Weave in place of this. We're running a Nernhone Enchantment to keep our spell damage high, to keep our heals going, or healing over time effects. On our back bar, we're running Iron Blood. Now we're running the Restoration Staff of Iron Blood because when Iron Blood procs, you no longer need to block or really do anything uh, hefty to your stamina economy so you just want to heal essentially so we're running iron blood on the back bar if you guys aren't familiar with what iron blood does it gives you 30 percent of mitigation but it also impairs your movement speed by 50 percent which is no big deal on sorcery because yeah i got streak right running poison on the back bar ideally you want to run escapist poisons but i don't have any of those on hand i've just been using the double dot poisons it's really not that big a deal monster set we're running we are running engine guardian the armor weights are 511 5 light, 1 medium, 1 heavy to maximize our undaunted passive and also our spell penetration and our cost mitigation due to the light armor passives. So we got Engine Guardian for the monster set. We have, of course, Iron Blood. Now, ideally, you want well fitted on all of your traits. I am not going to go through and change all these to well fitted. I need the Transmute Stones for the Deadlands DLC, so that's why I still have some impenetrable gear on. When it comes to jewelry, definitely run the Iron Blood jewelry just so you can get the 511. We have everything infused. We have two spell damage and then one Magicka recovery. Again, guys, you do not have to worry about max magic with this build. You want to know why? Because the one word we're using is Healing Ward and it actually scales off your spell damage. <laughs> so let's get into the skills of running Frags, of course, Haunting Curse, Endless Fury. Crushing Shock, you can run, run LE Weapon if you want. I am on controller, it just feels better to weave Crushing Shocks. Shriek, and then a front bar, you can run Dom Breaker. You can run the Greater uh, greater Frank Storm Atronach, entirely up to you. You can run Meteor, uh, it's just preference. Now on the back bar, I would suggest definitely running uh, Life Forgiver as your back bar ultimate because there are some oh shit scenarios you just gotta get the hell out of. So running Dark Conversion, uh, this is gonna give us a heal. Running Healing Ward, this is going to give us a heal as well. It's pretty hefty when everything's buffed up. Like, this Healing Ward actually heals and blocks for a lot. Rapid Regeneration, one of the best healing effects in the game. Critical Surge, Boundless Storm. Now, I love Critical Surge. You can run the Alliance Spell Drop Pots, don't get me wrong, but Critical Surge is such a good heal by itself. Especially when you're critting with down the storm and you know all the other stuff you got going on and especially that's why i really like crushing shock because these three chances to crit as well also giving you a heal so there's a lot of nuances i also forgot to mention running malakath apologies for that so we're not really worried too much about the crit right but it is helpful to have a little bit of crit on the build uh, i mean right now we're like sitting at like 16 percent. that's really not the end of the world you're not relying on your crits whatsoever so that's why we're going with malakath other than your healing of course so we're going to the champion system, going to the blue tree here. So right now I'm running focus mending. This is just to maximize our healings because everything we're using is single target healing. So focus mending here. We have mastered arms, deadly aim, and ironclad. Going over to the blue tree. Now I did play around a lot with this blue tree and come to find out healing ward doesn't really last long. It's mostly there just to mitigate a short burst of damage and you know possibly get a little heal so you can change this however you want as of right now i have survival instincts i have shield master i have bastion and i have uh, pain's refugee or refuge whatever you want to say now you can argue you can take out survival instincts and put points into arcane alacrity which is amazing because when you do have any portion of a ward up whatsoever and you roll dodge you're going to get a lot of cost mitigation on your roll dodge this is really good because one of the strategies on this build you have to healing ward roll dodge rapid regen there's a lot of roll dodging in this build otherwise you're not going to get any heals from your healing ward whatsoever so again guys it is a difficult build to run. It's not for the faint of heart. I'm not going to praise it and say, hey, this is the super meta, you know, new OP, broken, immortal Sork build, because it's honestly not. It's very fun to play with. There are builds out there better than this, but this is a very nice off meta setup that you can run and just have some fun with. 
and don't be a meta slave all the time. It's important to have fun in ESO and enjoy your time. Again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this video. I cannot wait for Deadlands to drop. See you guys in the next one. Peace.